Tell me about the synergy between you and Sinclair. Uh, it's, it's what goes on here? Well, you know, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons that I stayed here so long. Is and I think he he does trust what I do here after being here for such a long time. So right from the get-go when I started you have your parameters of what you can and cannot use right so then I guess you know you build tr you build trust with your boss and then they go okay we need this dish can you make this dish and I go okay and then you're gonna pair it with this one and I'm like okay and so he pretty much stays out of the kitchen picture right he's 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 Sinclair's basically a political food activist Basically, right? That's what he spends the majority of his time doing. That and the wine cellar take up a lot of his time. So he pretty much leaves the kitchen alone. You know, he'll phone down and he'll go, I think we should use more of this. Maybe we should grow this. Why don't you do this? And I'll go, like, okay. You know, like, why not? I mean, it's just all he's doing is feeding me and feeding the kitchen. And then I'll get off the phone and say, hey, you guys we got to do more of this we got to use more seafood I mean seaweed so let's use a lot of seaweed and try it in as many ways as we can and so you know he'll in a very passive way kind of implement things he wants to see and I got no reason to say no unless he wants me to use dandelion greens for that grow here that are just the most hideous thing in the world because they're so bitter you know he tried it he's like got to use dandelion greens you got to use dandelion greens so I cooked them some dandelion greens and I took them up to the office he like took one mouthful and he was like oh those are so bitter and I said yeah because maybe we shouldn't serve them and I was like yeah you know I don't like I don't mind bitter food like to a point mm -hmm. but I think that North Americans are more sweet orientated than bitter orientated mm -hmm. you know they, North Americans don't like bitter stuff mm -hmm. you know but bitter stuff's good I, 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 I like it you know it's like you spend a lot of time in Southeast Asia and you get used to stuff that's fishy tasting mm -hmm. right and then you know you just get accustomed to the taste of fishy tasting stuff because in Thailand fish sauce they use instead of soy sauce mm -hmm. you know like and you get accustomed to it so you know, I like fishy stuff, but not everybody likes fishy stuff. So you got to find a balance. Um, the majority of stuff that we grow here is um, herbs and salad greens. You know, there is quince trees here and plum trees here, but there's not a lot of root vegetables and stuff. So it's really interesting because what happens is you learn to use a plant from a flower to the root. You know, that's where Sinclair will come in. You know, he'll be like, Do you know, you can use the root to this plant. You know, in, in such and such a country, they use the root for doing this with. So there's like a plant that we have, it's called Hootnia. You know, and, and it kind of tastes like cilantro. You know, it's kind of that, but a little more soapy tasting, more earthy tasting. And he says, You know, you, in, in some countries, they use root when they braise dishes right you eat the leaf it's strong and it's pungent but if you use the roots when you braising meat it it's it's like using a clove it doesn't taste like a clove but it has that same kind of warming effect you know so the garden is so instrumental on everything because the kitchen menus are generally in a way kind of focused on what comes out of the garden at least the flavorings of stuff and some stuff definitely works better than other things and you know everybody has kind of their favorites of what they like to use and, and um, so it's like totally instrumental a prime example is we're not allowed to use lemons or limes right but last night I gave you guys a sauce that was green tomatoes and tuberous begonia stems and it was quite acidic and that came from mostly from the begonia stem that's our substitute for lemon. You can eat the flower, you can eat the stem. The stem looks like a piece of rhubarb, and you gotta peel it like a piece of rhubarb, and after that, if you bite it, it's, it's, it's very acidic. So, you can use it in the same way you can use a lemon, but they're not here year round. And they don't, and you learn things like, oh, I'll take a whole bunch of stem and I'll freeze it, 
right? And so I'll have it in the off season. So I take it, I freeze it, I pull out a bag, I thaw it, and it just oxidizes and turns into this puddle of mud, right? And it's just like, well, I guess that's not gonna happen, right? When, generally speaking, when people have um, a seven course meal and it's wine pairing, it's, generally it's always BC wine, bottom line, you know, because we're here to showcase BC food and BC wine. So it, it's not something that's been in a development stage. It's just something that's been done here for quite a duration of time. I think at one point maybe we were more of a destination point for chefs because of the reputation. But as as like chefs became rock star, superstar dudes, right? More like cool restaurants started popping up. Um, you got chefs transplanted from Europe that worked in amazing places and all of a sudden you got people in the cities, cities fun, funneling into those restaurants. Um, I still get a lot of people coming over but they come for the season to check it out, to work it for a season, to put it on their resume. Some stay, some go, most go. So, But also because we're so seasonal, you know, you have 12 to 14 staff in the summer, and I have five staff now. So what made you stay? Uh, the lifestyle. I, I love it. Like, I like, I'm not a city person. I did the city thing, you know. I worked in the city, but not for very long, just a few years. I came out here. I was born on the island. Mm. And the other reason is uh, I'm a motorcycle freak. So, I, I, like out here you live on gateway to road race heaven, like all the roads are windy. So, motorcycle sport bikes are my hobby, so it's kind of like all kind of fit together. You know, live in the city, get a million tickets, have to drive an hour and a half to get to a windy road. You know, like, I pull out of my driveway, go down the street, hang a right, and the road's windy. Huh. Right? I mean, I can go for a little ride for half an hour, 40 minutes before work, and, and you know have a blast you know so lifestyle I mean it's beautiful here it's like it's like unbelievable you know you go traveling I've been traveling I've seen a lot been a lot been all over the world and you come back here and you go geez it's really beautiful here you know you, you, I don't think I've ever taken it for granted it's easy to take things for granted